In this video, we will learn about drawing and mixing up of insulins. This can be a challenging topic for internationally educated nurses or nursing students. So let's just review this topic. Mixing of two insulins as per physician's orders is one of the procedures which you will do often in your clinical settings. So how to mix? Remember one golden rule for this. Always draw clear before cloudy or you can use the acronym RN. So always draw your regular first and then the NPH. Regular insulins are clear in nature, whereas NPH intermediate insulins, they are cloudy in appearance. Let's just do the recap one more time. Clear before cloudy or RN, regular before NPH. So first step is calculation of the total required volume of medication needed in the case we are going to mix up these insulins. For example, physician ordered 10 units of NPH and 10 units of regular insulin. So what would you do? You would want to open up both vials and clean the top of both vials after washing your hands with alcohol pad to avoid contamination and you can use the individual alcohol pads for each vial. Once your vials are clean, now you need to grab insulin syringe and then you're going to draw back the total amount of air that you need in this case, which is 10 plus 10, 20 units. Now here is the next confusing step. So pay attention to it. Insert the needle in the NPH vial first and inject 10 units of air in that vial. Now you can see you are still left with 10 units of air in the needle. Now you can remove that needle from NPH vial. Now you're going to take those 10 units and inject them into regular insulin vial. Once you have injected the air into the regular insulin vial, you can invert it and draw up your 10 units of regular insulin. So make sure that you are not overdrawing at this step. Once you have your 10 units, then you remove the needle from the regular and insert it back into the NPH vial and invert it. Draw back exactly the prescribed dose of NPH insulin, which is 10 units in this case. If you accidentally overdraw, Remember, you need to start over the procedure. You cannot inject it back because you have already mixed the insulins. So start over. But if you have taken carefully the exact amount of units, now you can withdraw your needle and you are ready to administer it to your patient. If you are not administering the drug right away, make sure you recap it using scoop method. Label the syringe with the drug name, dosage, date and time and your initials. Let's just recap one more time. You're going to put the air in NPH first. Then you're putting the air into the regular vial. Afterwards, you are inverting the regular vial, drawing up your regular insulin first. Then you are taking back that syringe and putting it into the NPH vial and withdrawing your amount from the NPH, which is the cloudy insulin. This is important. That's why we are emphasizing on this step. Insulins are also treated as high alert drugs. So most of the hospitals would have a policy of independent double check. So you can always double check the insulin with another registered nurse or registered practical nurse based on your hospital policy. I hope you enjoyed learning from this video. Hello nurses and nursing students. I hope you guys enjoyed learning the skill of mixing insulins. This is one of the tricky ones. Now let's just practice some NPLEX style questions related to this skill. So here is the first question on your screen. The question says the nurse has received the following prescription from the healthcare provider, which is Humalog 24 units every four hourly and lent us 35 units subcutaneously Q12 hourly. What should the nurse do first? So now you can see there are four options. I want you to take a pause and review those options and think for yourself what's the answer. And then I will discuss with you every single statement. All right, so let's just move on to statement number A. Ask for clarification from the healthcare provider as the prescription is not complete. That is correct guys, this is the correct answer because prescription needs to be clarified because the route is missing on the Humalog insulin. Prescription 
and lentus is usually given at the bedtime which should be specified so this means you need to clarify the order let's just still review i know you guys already now know that b c and d is not an option but it's always good to understand the rationals so option number b draw up the 35 units of lentus insulin prior to the 25 units of humalog and that is incorrect because lentus is usually given at the bedtime and humalog is given with the meals so that's not a correct statement let's just review option number c draw up 24 units of humalog prior to the 35 units of lentus again what do you guys think about it this is incorrect because these two insulin should not be mixed together let's just review option number 4 assess the patient's blood glucose at least 1 hour prior to the insulin administration and this is incorrect because blood glucose to be assessed within half an hour of insulin administration and prior to the client eating so i hope you enjoyed learning this question now let's just move on to the next question all right guys so next question here you see on your screen the nurse has finished teaching a client with a diabetes how to administer insulin The nurses evaluate that learning has occurred when the client make which statement. I know it seems like an easy question. You do get some easy questions in an NCLEX. NCLEX is all about testing your basic nursing knowledge. Here are your four options. So let's just review those options. Again, pause your screen and choose your answer. All right guys, let's just review option number A. I should take my insulin about 30 minutes after I eat. What do you guys think about it? That is an incorrect option because you guys should know insulin is taken prior to the meal not after the meal. Let's just review option number 2. I should provide direct pressure over the site following the injection. What do you guys think about it? This is incorrect. It is not recommended or necessary to put direct pressure over an insulin injection site. Let's just review option number 3. Option number 3 says I should use the abdominal area only for insulin injections. Any thoughts on that? That is incorrect because the client should rotate the site because otherwise you guys know you have learned that in the video that patient can suffer from lipoatrophy or lipohypertrophy. Okay, let's just review option number D. I should only use a calibrated insulin pen for the injections. Hmm, you guys must be thinking, "Huh, that's not true." But actually this is true in the statement. Why? Because best practices for the clients at home is to use insulin pens because this eliminates the need to draw up the insulin because you know drawing up insulin can be challenging for nurses so think about the patients. So that's why option number D is the correct option for this. All right, now let's just move on to the next 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 question. All right guys, so let's just head on to our next question. So the question here on your screen. A client with type 2 diabetes is admitted to the hospital with pneumonia. The client's oral anti-diabetic medication has been discontinued and the client is now receiving insulin for glucose control. Which of the following statements best explain the rationale for this change in medication? Here are your four options. I want you to take a pause and think which one is the correct option. All right, so let's just review option number A. Infection increases the risk of hypoglycemia. Think No, that's incorrect because infection increases the risk of hyperglycemia, not hypoglycemia. So that is incorrect statement. Let's just move on to statement number B. Infection has compromised beta cell function so that the patient will need insulin from now on. Do you think that's the correct rational? No, guys, that's not the correct rational. The client will not necessarily need insulin from now on. They are very likely they can go back to the oral anti-diabetic once the infection is resolved. All right, now let's just review the third option, which is C. Insulin administration will prevent hypoglycemia during the illness. What do you guys think? That is incorrect. Insulin will help prevent hyperglycemia, but not hypoglycemia. And let's just review the last option, which is D. Acute illness like pneumonia will cause increased insulin resistance. and that is the correct option guys because you should know that stress any kind of stress it can be you know physical stress infection patient is going for surgery it does increase the need of the insulin why because the body goes into the mode of insulin resistance so the answer is d okay now let's just head on to the final question associated with this topic and i hope you guys are still staying with us and continuing with these questions 
All right, guys, here is the last question on the screen. A nurse is preparing to administer a combination of regular insulin and NPH insulin to the client with diabetes. What is the correct sequence when drawing up the two insulins in one syringe? And I hope you guys have already learned this. So this should be an easy question for you guys. So here are the four options. Take a pause and then we'll review the answer. So let's just review option number A. Draw up the regular insulin first followed by the NPH. Yes, that's the correct answer because you guys know RN, regular first and then NPH. So that is correct. But we will still review the other options because I told you it's important to understand rationals. So statement number B, draw up the NPH insulin first followed by the regular insulin. What do you guys think? All right, so you guys know that's an incorrect option, right? So we already know RN, RN. Okay, now let's just move on to the option number three. Draw up both insulin simultaneously in the same syringe. Sorry, I'm just laughing because, but do you think is this appropriate for a nurse to do? Can you draw up two insulins together? I'm pretty sure behind the screens you're saying no, no, that's an incorrect answer. Now let's just do option number D, which is the last option. Alternate drawing up small amount of each insulin until the correct dose is reached. Absolutely a big no-no guys. That's an incorrect technique. You would never do that. Okay. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed learning clinical skill as well as NCLEX style question practice. That's what we do at FPNPC. We are always here to support the students and make sure you contact us if you have more queries. Please like and subscribe to our channel. And if you like this video, share it with your friends. Thank you very much.